Hi, I'd like to start off this section of the tool with a bit of theory and some assertions. First, whatever way you look at it, code is complex. It's the nature of the beast. But second, it doesn't have to be overly complex. Keeping our complexity to manageable levels is really one of the key challenges in software development today. Third, there are different kinds of complexity. One of these, for sure, is fat methods. Let's have a quick look at an example. You've probably seen cases like this before. It goes on and on and on with nested if blocks and else's and on and more, etc. And just about everyone would agree that it would be better to take this big method and chop it up into smaller, more manageable chunks. But is this the only or even the most important form of excessive complexity? Roger Sessions thinks not. He describes this kind of overcomplexity as relatively benign and is far more concerned about interdependency at the system and architecture levels. The same conclusion was reached in a MITRE study for the US Department of Defense. They concluded that architecture and design is the key to achieving the cost savings and operational flexibility inherent in software systems. And the numbers they came up with are pretty startling. They found that well-structured code could be changed twice as quickly at half the cost Moreover, the outputs contained eight times less bugs. Well, that's very exciting and encouraging, but in the general case, it's, it's kind of hard to act on in the absence of meaningful and always up-to-date information about our code-based design. In fact, I'd assert that what's up on the screen now is probably just about the best we can hope for in the general case. Now, this is to say that as we work away at our code base over time and it grows in size, we're accumulating complexity debt at a more or less linear rate. By complexity debt here I mean the superset of things in the code base that are more complicated than they really need to be. But of course the danger is that if you keep accumulating debt unchecked, well, sooner or later it's going to start impacting your team's agility. Common symptoms here are that it takes longer and longer to add new features and increased vulnerability to side effects. Rebecca Weir Sprock sums up a code base in this state perfectly, comparing it to a lumbering Frankenstein. Well, the good news is that Structure 101 gives you a high degree of visibility into your complexity debt with a simple and actionable measurement framework. It's based on the principle that an ideally structured code base will take its problem domain, which may be its by itself be quite big and daunting, but use divide and conquer to break it down into manageable mind-sized chunks. Now there are two sides to this coin. The first is the notion of fat, too much stuff in one place. And we saw an example of this at the beginning of this session when we looked at a very fat method. Well, we can capture this case by using a metric such as cyclomatic complexity and setting a threshold. And any method in our code base that exceeds the threshold value can be deemed to be excessively complex, more complicated than it needs to be. But of course, in Structure 101, we want to look at the code base as a whole, not just method bodies. So, we just apply exactly the same principle all the way up through the code base hierarchy. In other words, there's a limit to how much complexity we should have in any one class, or in any one package, right the way up to the top level components in the code base. We capture this in exactly the same way by defining appropriate thresholds, though in this case we use a slightly different metric, namely compositional complexity. OK, so I mentioned before that there are two sides to the coin. To illustrate this, I'm going to go back to version 135 of Finebugs that I showed at the end of the visualization session. So the point is that we can always reduce fat by chopping things up into smaller pieces. But if we do this in an essentially arbitrary fashion, then we're not really solving the underlying complexity or, or decomposing it into meaningful chunks. You could think of this as divide, but not conquer. It's kind of meaningless. OK, so that gives us a definition of our ideal code base, namely that it would avoid fat at all levels, but also avoid tangles higher up the way. Anything that violates either of these principles is deemed to be more complex than ideal. As to the degree of overcomplexity, well, for fat it depends how far the code item is over threshold, whereas for tangles, well, it depends on how tangled the item is. For example, version 088 of Finebugs was almost perfect. There was just that one small lightweight rogue dependence muddying the waters. 
And once we have the degree that this can be correlated with size, and the upshot of all this is a single metric called excess, excessive complexity. The correlation with size is important, by the way, because it allows us to compare different forms of overcomplexity at different levels in the code base using a common unit of measurement. You can think of it as notional lines of code, if you like. It also means that total excess can be expressed as a percentage of the overall code base size. So, with all that in place, I'll just show you quite briefly how this actually looks inside the Structure 101 client itself. The key perspective here is the excess perspective, which is not surprising. Bottom left is the excess configuration. This is where I can set the various thresholds I was referring to before. Bottom right we have the list of individual items deemed to be excessively complex. Double click on an item to find out why. If I scroll down the list a little bit I'll see that that method that we were looking at earlier, that monster method, is relatively high in the overall pecking order. Top right is a pie chart giving me a sense of the distribution of the different types of excessive complexity. I can also use this to filter the offenders list, for instance, just show me the fat methods. And finally, the drill down viewer top left allows me to understand distributions through the code base. The total width of the bar represents size, while the red portion denotes the percentage excess. OK, I'd like to just wrap up this section now with a very quick glance at some excess profiles over time. Uh, this is information you can get from the Structure 101 web application, by the way. So first is a Greenfield project where the team have been using Structure 101 from the get-go. And you can see here the project is progressing along quite nicely, but all the while the excess is hugging the baseline, staying close to zero excess. So second one, this one was actually a parallel project to the first one, but made a conscious decision to cut some corners to meet a deadline. But as you can see, they view this as a loan, and they've already started paying it back. But it's probably this last one which will be of greatest interest to a lot of people. So this project had been running a good while, it was up to 75% excess when they adopted Structure 101. But they've reversed the trend, no big bang, just chipping away at it, and the excess is coming down now, gently over time.